Left, right, left, right, left, right. About face. Left, left, left. June was nearing its end while the drum line was just beginning. The sun beat down on all nine of us as we marched to one of our cadences, party time. It was early afternoon and we were all dripping in sweat while carrying our drums. The temptation to unsaddle our instruments and give our backs a rest was very strong, but Mr. Marner and Miss Beckham continued to shout out cadences and exhorted us to march to the beat. We knew that today was the day we were to perform for our first audience. Parents and several teachers gathered by the Lumen Center to watch us perform. At the close of our last cadence, those gathered clapped and cheered us on. We collectively expressed our gratitude and unharnessed our drums. And while we shared a sigh of relief, simultaneously we were proud of what we had accomplished as a group in such a short interval. April 3rd, Gilman vs. McDonough. In the 2012-2013 indoor track season, McDonough swept Gilman in our five encounters. Out of all the MIAA conference schools, McDonough finished first at every meet while we finished second. This bitter taste of defeat stuck with our track team and those who continued on to the outdoor season used this experience as extra motivation. Our outdoor track season began with everyone setting their sights on our first dual meet against McDonough. We knew that in order to be victorious, we had to rely on every member of our team to contribute. Everyone, whether they were a pole vaulter, a hurdler, or a two-miler, had to perform at their highest level. The team began preparing for this contest in early February. Seniors displayed their leadership by keeping the team focused on this goal. Our coaches began formulating their strategy for a successful campaign. Each practice preceding April 3rd had a special sense of purpose and urgency. In track and field, a dual meet has a maximum of 146 points that can be won. Our target was accumulating 74 of those points, which would assure victory. It is common belief that track and field is an individual sport, and to an extent, this is true. You are alone and performing by yourself. However, in reality, track and field is the epitome of a team sport, even though this might be difficult for a casual observer to do. In football, one can easily see the quarterback firing to an open receiver, or the point guard delivering a sweet dish to the forward for an easy layup in basketball. In track and field, however, most events involve an individual performing on their own without a teammate to block or pick for them. And while the track members complete, compete individually in many distinct events, the team concept is more pronounced because it is the accumulation of points earned in each of these individual events that determines the collective outcome. Coaches, teammates, and the school are relying on each athlete to put forth his best effort. And similarly, the athletes are fully aware of this reliance, and they push themselves to jump, hurdle, sprint, and throw to the best of their abilities, to not let those depending on them down. Each individual is leaving it all out there, fully aware that they are a part of something bigger than themselves. On April 3rd, 2013, Gilman triumphed over McDonald, 86-60. Mr. Smythe, Mrs. Turner, mom, dad, family, friends, fellow students, I share these two anecdotes with you as a means to emphasize how we rely upon each other. This dependence is the fabric that bonds us not only as teammates and classmates, but also as members of the Gilman community. Gilman is a special place with teachers, students, and parents displaying many diverse talents and abilities. Caught up in our own endeavors, we can at times lose sight of those around us. A typical Monday through Friday sees us waking up, attending classes all day, participating in athletics, returning home, doing more homework, and then trying to fit in time to sleep, eat, and just breathe. Part of what makes Gilman unique is its dedicated members who invest their time and effort into each other. Teachers, family, friends, and coaches are devoted to our education, our success, basically our overall well-being. We rely on each other to realize our goals, our dreams, our aspirations. But as much as we depend on others, we must never forget others are depending on us. As, we as much as we take, we also must remember to give back. Our membership in the Gilman community comes with an obligation. 
we are charged to be a responsible teammate, classmate, student, young adult. And while we are young and do not have all the answers, we do possess a roadmap with the values Gilman instills in us. In the classroom, we have an obligation to participate, to do the homework, to study. On the field, we have an obligation to practice with maximum effort, to push each other, and to compete. In the hallways, we have an obligation to acknowledge others, to hold the door for other people, and to foster an atmosphere of respect and support. Remember how you interact with others can make a lasting difference, and this difference is not always readily recognized. At the beginning of this year, at the senior breakfast, Mr. Smythe shared a story about, his, about how he still remembers the names of upperclassmen when he was a freshman, even today, years later. And while he was not necessarily friends with these individuals, he remembered them based upon how he saw them conduct themselves. Whether you are a freshman or a senior, people will be looking to you for guidance, and they will be counting upon you. And they will remember how you conduct yourselves. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, left. Each member of the drum line bonded together into a cohesive unit. Our hours of practice provide us with a single purpose of mission. As we learned our instruments and marching, we made our fair share of mistakes. But with each setback came an equal level of support and understanding that served to steady us and make us stronger. We came to realize how dependent we were upon each other's performance as we strove to make a conclusion. Thank you.